previously on One Small Ship. I finish up the Chinese diesel heater installation, mounting the heat ducting, vents and control panel, then fire up the heater for the first time with great results. I glass in the bracket for the propane gas locker and drill a hole for the gas escape through hole, but I still need to bolt the bucket in place and hook it up to the copper pipes and hoses. Finally, I start getting ready to fit and glue down the new cockpit teak decking. My name is Andy, and this is the story of one small ship. It's late April, and summer is just around the corner. Marella's rigging has been left largely untouched since we bought her, and the last big project for this season is an overhaul of the mast electrics. I'm planning a VHF antenna at the masthead, along with a new anchor light and wind instrument, so naturally, I'm very excited to find a package waiting for me. So this is the NASA Marine Clipper Wind version 2, complete with the masthead unit and the display. And this is going to go on the bulkhead in my cockpit. So this whole thing lifts up and underneath here is the, I think, 20 meters of cable that it comes with. Installing the masthead sensor, that's, okay, so that's this, and it says sensor, and an arrow pointing up. So the mast sensor is gonna sit on this rod, and I assume I'll have to unscrew this plate to get it in place. I think the build quality is probably okay. I mean, this is not one of the more expensive units, and uh, yeah, I think this is going to do me quite well. So here's where the old connector for the mast electrics was mounted. It was sitting like that and is one of these simple stainless connectors. And so I've got one for the VHF, which is going to go probably here. Then the new one for the electrics will go probably on top or on the side of that, like that. So I was contemplating for a while to put the uh, mast connectors on the port side instead. But the problem is that here, this is the opening to the front cabin and to the head, and so people are going to be walking back and forth. So right here on the starboard side, there's a lot more space. People are not going to be walking here. The cables can run here freely without people tripping over them and, and all that. So after thinking about it some more, I think I'm going to put the 12 volt outlet here. It's not going to be as intrusive as the mast lights, and it does get rather crowded on that side. Um, I'm using one of the old holes for the connector that was there previously, and uh, it seems to work quite well. So this is a three pin connector for the wind instrument. So we want this to sit right above the other one, and I want the spacing between them to be about as much as the spacing between these two. I'm going to just position it carefully. So now we need to take the whole thing out again and drill out a nice hole. And now we just screw that in place. Right, so that's all the mast connectors done. What I'm gonna do now is just put these plugs in the sockets and when it comes time to install this uh, new cabling in the mast, I know where to find the plugs. Thank you. 
putting the finishing touches on the propane gas installation, I hook up the hose for the gas escape and connect the copper pipe and leak tester that I installed a few years ago. It'll be nice to be able to have a cup of tea aboard Morella again, but I'm a bit concerned that the amount of gas we can carry is not going to be enough. I'll probably have to revisit this project in the future. The forecast says I have at least a two-week window of clear, warm weather, so I decide to finally start tackling the major part of the Cockpit Teak project. During the winter, I've spent some time at home cutting and shaping new teak planks using the remnants of the old panel as a template. I've done most of the rough shaping, but in order to get the details right, I need to dry fit all the pieces and take some measurements. Seeing the new wood laid out like this for the first time, I get the feeling that maybe this will all be worth it in the end. So I'm, uh, I'm grading the, the trim pieces with a small detail plane and then finishing it off <coughs> first with 80 grit sandpaper and then with 120 grit to get, to get the corners rounded off right. I'm very happy with this. It's almost perfectly rounded off, at least to the eye. Well, I've only got this big trim piece that sits up here in front of the companionway left. And I need to take the plane and plane a nice grade, a 45 degree grade on this edge and sand it down to a nice round edge. I think I can consider myself done with the planing. So now I just grab a piece of 80 grit sandpaper and start rounding off. Yeah, that looks really good. Perfect. So I've cut all the pieces, I've trimmed and rounded all the corners, but I know that gluing the whole thing down means that if I've made a mistake, I will not be able to correct it. So here goes. It's make or break time. I fill a few buckets with water for weight and look over all of the pieces one last time to make sure it all looks right. Finally, I wipe everything down one last time with acetone, then I break out the glue. It's a messy process, and I've never done anything like this before. 
The glue I'm using is Cicaflex 298, the fast curing version, and I know that once it starts to skin over, I'll be out of time. It sticks to everything, and I immediately regret not having taken better precautions, taping off and covering the area around where I'm working. But I press on, and piece by piece, the new teak gets glued into place. So I've done all of the centre ribs and the curved trim piece and I'm now going to move on to the port side. So we're just going to move these ribs away and we'll weigh down this side. Oops. I'm still on my first pack of adhesive so this should probably be enough for the whole area considering I have two more packs of this stuff. So I just arrived at the boat. This has had about 18 hours to cure now and it seems rock solid. So I'm going to just start removing all this stuff and then I'm probably going to break out the sander and start giving the whole thing a light sanding. I'm not going to take off too much but I want to start sanding just to see where the unevenness is and then I can prepare for caulking. So anyway let's get rid of all this crap and we can see what we're working with. So there's a slight unevenness because the shorter pieces don't want to bend as much so here they're almost flush with the trim and here they're sitting maybe a millimeter higher. Here it's a little bit lower actually and I attribute that to me not pushing down hard enough on the trim and if I'd done that and that would sit a little bit lower here the rest of the trim pieces look good. Yep. There's a little bit of a flare out here as well, but not much. Some chisels and tools, and we're going to get rid of all this adhesive that's inside of these gaps. And once that's done, I'll break out the sander. Throughout this whole project, there's been an ungodly amount of cleanup. <laughs> Every application requires a clean surface, and even just fingerprints can introduce impurities that will prevent a good bond between sealant and the substrate. I don't know how many cans of acetone I ended up using during the entire rebuild, but I absolutely prefer doing a bit more than necessary than a bit less. In the end, the results speak for themselves. I'm glad I took the extra time and made sure to prepare before every step of the process. Yesterday I came down to the boat, I took all the stuff off and looked at the result of the gluing. I was a little bit apprehensive, but after looking at it today, I think this is probably really good. Um, I then took the sander and sanded everything down and it feels 
it feels really smooth now and there are no high spots or low spots, everything is flush. I'm going to give this a thorough clean and then we're going to start the caulking process. I also went ahead and I sanded the two aft panels, um, the ones on either side of the aft cockpit locker, and it came out really well. Coming down to the boat today, seeing the whole cockpit sanded, all the teak looking nice and fresh, just gave me such a confidence boost. I'm really happy about this. So as you might have noticed, I put in the handrails that I took home and varnished. There are some pops and some bubbles and irregularities that have formed. But I'm a beginner at this and I, I'm sure I will improve. But putting those in really made the whole companionway stand out and all this wood now looks terrible because the teak is lovely, the teak is beautiful and these handrails varnished now look great. So I think as soon as the boat is in the water what I want to do is I want to take all of the wood in the companionway down, take it home, sand it, varnish it and hopefully that's going to very nicely match the look of the handrails. So one more thing happened yesterday and that's that the uh, guy who owns the engine shop over here came down to the boat and he pushed my new cutlass bearing into place. And the cutlass bearing is a, a long story but the short version is that I've had it stuffed in a locker down here for three years and I haven't installed it because I haven't been able to myself. So taking that step and talking to a professional, getting it done, that was worth it. So once he was done, I felt the prop shaft, I rotated it in place. There's hardly any friction now. There's no noise, there's no dragging, there's no scraping. It just spins freely for a half a rotation and stops. So once the prop is back on, the only thing to do before we can get the boat in the water is to slap on anti-fouling and polish the sides of the hull. So today started out a little bit cooler, but it's warmed up quite a bit, the sun is shining. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slap on some sunscreen, I'm going to get my tools out, and we're going to start caulking. Let's go. Another round of cleanup for what feels like the hundredth time. I learnt my lesson with the glue, so this time I lined the entire area with masking tape so there will at least be less of a cleanup afterwards. Sadly, this is all the footage I have of the corking process. For some reason, likely operator error, the camera didn't record the rest of it, but it basically consisted of me filling in two or three lines like these at a time, then spreading the cork gently with a spatula, pressing any air bubbles out and making sure it would bind properly to the wood. I'm using SIS 440 from Teak Decking Systems. It's very beginner friendly in that it doesn't require priming, but if you're recorking an old Teak Deck then it's important to make sure none of the old product remains, otherwise there's a risk that the new corking won't cure properly. And here's the result. Granted it's not pretty, but next time I'll take the sander to this mess and we'll see how that turns out. Stay tuned for the next part of our journey, and thank you so much for watching. Fair winds.